I, I was a hip hopper. Only that. I did not like that part, but I can't imagine. <laughs> Honestly, in my heart of hearts, whenever I imagined marriage, it was me walking down the aisle. With Edric. Aww. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, wherever you are tuning in from. It's such a blessing to have you here on our channel. Live with Miriam and Artie. And for this episode, we're going through our hashtag Forever Honeymooners. And we're so excited to introduce to you our special guests for today. Yes. So, Edric and Joy. I came up with some keywords to, um, that, that came to mind. Fun. Yes. Power yes. couple. Yeah. Power couple influencers. Mm -hmm. Speakers in demand. Teachers and trainers, authors, business partners, Homeschool Global. That's a long list. Servants of the <laughs> Lord, homeschooling parents. To I put 16 kids. 16. No, 16. <laughs> it looks like sometimes six, 16. No. And <laughs> couple goals ng maraming maraming madla, full of wisdom and sweetness as a couple. Welcome, Edric and Joy. But some of, some of those things, I'm not sure that we really yeah, do about them over. I know. Yeah. It's like a, <laughs> like too kind a list, I think. Yeah. But thanks <laughs> for having us, guys. Yeah, we're glad to see that. Um, you know, even as the pandemic rages on, you're doing well, and God has blessed mm -hmm. you with a baby. It's it's awesome to be here. Thanks for having us because oh. I do think we are kind of forever honeymooners, right? By God's grace. For the most part. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes yeah, nightmare. Enemies. Sometimes. <laughs> We're gonna sometimes or sometimes anyone. We can't wait to hear your love story, but before that, we're gonna do like an icebreaker. Sure. Okay. Since San Jose seminar organizing, we usually have an icebreaker in the beginning. So <laughs> rapid questions. First thing that comes to mind or or fill in the blanks, okay? Game. All right. Are you ready? ready? My marriage is amazing. Happy and amazing. <laughs> okay. Next. Sex is amazing <laughs> it's, not more, it's really more me honestly i know we're not supposed to explain answers we can explain later yeah, later later no oversharing yet best honeymoon destination wow um i definitely liked uh europe? iceland yeah europe that was amazing yeah that was it's otherworldly cool. yeah yeah but we didn't it's go it's not there a honeymoon honeymoon. destination like it's a nice destination as a married couple we went to yeah for sure that was uh oh you've been to iceland we stayed Very in an good. ice hotel yeah, nice. yeah. yeah with the, what nice. with the view of the aurora in your room from your room? no we went in the summer so it was midsummer it was like a, a 23 hour day and one hour of night wow, wow. Very unique experience. Never sleep? <laughs> <laughs> you have to close the blinds yeah so that there's yeah. artificial darkness yeah. Awesome. Cool. Okay. We should try that. Pet peeve. Um, my pet peeve is when I'm talking to Edric and I'm asking him a question and he's not answering me because he is focused on something else or on his phone. That is one of my pet peeves. Not being served. Mm. That's my pet peeve. Mm. When I ask and she gives me this face like, why are you asking me to do that? Do it yourself, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Major. Your spouses, your partner's favorite life verse yeah we had matching sweaters in this one baby remember that <laughs> nah, yeah, oh, nah, yeah. ready? okay ready Set. one two three show it okay galatians, galatians 2 20 and romans 8 20 so it's the partner right so for, yeah, for two, is it yeah. correct yeah that's correct that's correct me it's not 15 first corinthians 15 10 that's on the sweater <laughs> So we have our first no. And the grace of God, I am what I am. That's first Corinthians 1510. Yes. <laughs> this is uh, no longer I, but Christ. Oh, so okay. funny. Yeah. So she knew the verse. Oh she wrote goodness. the wrong I'm verse sorry. number. Uh, your spouse's favorite comfort food. All ready. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Show it. Chocolate cake and paxiu. Oh, so, okay. Edric, can you confirm chocolate cake, Karao? Yes, you. 
Yeah, of course. Fuck this you? is not just her comfort food. This is like her go-to for anything. Yeah. Food. I, I hope there's fucks you in heaven. That's all I can say. Fucks you na ano? Fucks you na fish. Fish. Fucks you na fish. Yeah. Bangus, Ooh. like bangus. Wow. Yes, yeah. like or galong gong. Right? You're like one. Of, you're like the first person ever who's listed as. Yeah, yeah I would expect Joy. She's kind of. She, for me, my impression of her, she's a salmon kind of girl. I wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, no, I like you, I like cheap fish. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the better. Okay, oh. list down your spouses top 2 love language. Oh, easy. Okay, oh. ready. Okay, Set. ready. One, two, three. Okay, can you confirm? Uh, Edric Dow, your love service language is touch. service and sure. touch. My second one would probably be time more than what? touch. What? <laughs> okay, you don't have to write it down. You can just yeah. One just two number one is yes and number two is no. Okay. 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 Uh, love at first sight. Love so at first one sight. is yes, two is no, right? Yeah. Okay. okay was, ready? It love at, was it love at first sight? Ready, set, go. You have to put a number. Two, two is no. Yeah. There. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you for being such sports. Which brings us that question brings us to your love story. Joy and Edric, as they say, pa share naman. A share naman ng love story niyo. Where does it begin? Mm. So it wasn't love at first sight because we met in college. Um, mm. And I thought two things. Number one, she was different in a good way and in a bad way. Like, she's a little weird. Like, she would wear black to school. She had black, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Mascara and black stuff. And I would see her kind of floating through college halls. I'm like, who's this strange girl? But at the same time, she was... It was, it just, I was curious. I'm like, who is this girl? And um, both went to which school? Ateneo. We went, both went to Ateneo, yeah. And so I, um, she was one year below me, and I had shifted from ME to management because I didn't do too well in ME. Let's just save that for another day. So I saw her in our class, and that's where I got more interested. I had to attend um, a psych class, mm. and that's where we first became classmates, and that's where we got to know each other. Mm. And the first uh, conversation we ever had was? It was about God. Yeah. Mm. I, I, you know, Edric, I think I found him cute, but he wasn't necessarily my physical type before. Now he is, but before, because I like the, the Marlboro man type. <laughs> Not the clean yeah. cut boy next door. You know, she liked the grizz, grizzly, like before, dark, now, mysterious. Now, 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 yeah, now. And me, I thought that, I honestly thought, even as I saw her, parang, even my friends would say, ibang level yan. I come from uh, Ateneo all the way, right? So we we have this whole boy school, girl school. We have kind of what we expect from girl school. She yeah, wasn't right. from any of those typical private schools. She came from faith. So I saw her. I'm like, oh, this girl's foreign, different. And I thought she was out of my league. That was my impression. So <laughs> Yes. And um, we had a group project. So we it was outdoors and usually we wouldn't be sitting beside each other but I think I'd come in a little bit late to, so I sat down on the same bench where he was doing his his um, accounting. accounting homework which he should have done <laughs> outside <laughs> beforehand. of the class and then we just started talking about God during class which you shouldn't have been doing either <laughs> But their class was yeah. in charge of presenting and teaching that day. And the, the psych teacher said, you present where you want, what you want. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that's why it was outdoors in an mm. open area with all these benches. And mm. as their team was presenting, she was back because it wasn't her turn. That's why she was sitting with me. Yes. And then I was chatting her up. So, yeah. And then, and then I think that we realized while well, we really connect on a, on a level. pretty diff yeah, a deeper level, my, my impression of most of the people at the Neo Cafe was, you know, they're smart and everything, but I didn't feel like I could always have really deep um, spiritual conversations with people. Mm. So that was a little different for me. And I appreciated that. And I just felt like right away, there was something safe about Edric that I, that I was drawn to um, something in his personality. Yeah. He seemed like the protective type. And it helped given Joy's background, right? And that's what I realized later. For me, there was there was a mystery about her because she was very different from any girl I had known. As I mentioned, right? All boys school, we have this. If you're from this school, this is kind of your profile. So I didn't really get to read her. But that conversation made me also realize how she was someone with a lot of depth, you know, and I wasn't used to that. Um, and so I was very curious. That's what drew me in, like, 
I want to find out more about this girl. And this Actually, what you should really say is that you had a list of top 10 girls <laughs> that you were attracted to. And I wasn't on that list. But you had <laughs> yes, she this, was. Like, she was on that list. No, yes, you were. I, previously, I was not no, on, you were that, on list. that list. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how we met. And let's just fast forward. So that's how we met in college. And from that, um, from that class, you know, I think that's where a lot of the feeling started. Because I would, be this is my SMB, right? Already, if you remember SMB, style mobile up, right? So my SMB would be, um, Joy would be sitting in the front of the class. I would be in the back of the class. And as she would be done, I would slow down my packing of things so that as she goes out, then I could be with her and we could walk down to the next class. That's my style, style mobile up. So Joy and Aman, this is hers, and maybe she will never acknowledge this, but this is her style. She'd be sitting in the front of the class like, like this, right? And then she'd fix her hair and then look back like, like oh that, right? God, so I'm like, oh, hey, hey. She, she's, I'm <laughs> like, I guess she's interested, right? So I was like, oh, okay. Was that no. intentional, Joy? That's, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. I don't think I was that obvious. But yes, I would fix my hair and, and hoping then, he would notice. But <laughs> I wasn't like, you know, really looking backwards. But your eyes look back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think that was, I think that was, I was not so. <laughs> So anyway, she acknowledged the part that matters, that she was, that's her style also to show that, I guess she's, so that's where it started in that class. Um, and then, can I, can I tell you guys why? Because, uh -huh. because, oh. you know, it's important. Like if you, if you like somebody, right, but you're the girl and of course you don't want to initiate things. I, I didn't want to be that type of girl. Baby, your shorts are totally seen in this video. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. This is us in college. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. so you know, you don't want to initiate it yeah. because you still want to preserve that sense of mystery. And of course. it has to be that the guy, in my opinion, still has to work for, hmm. to express and to, you know, approach you and everything. But I do believe in giving signs, you know, dropping signs that encourage them and don't like, it's not a game, but it's just like, I'm approachable, like that kind of thing. I'm interested. That's more. I what would. You're, if yeah, you would. That, the, 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 it's a very fine. It's a very no. fine line, right? But you have to communicate that if you did approach me, I would talk to you. That kind so of. So I'm thing. interested. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so basically, so that. So anyway, I want to just kind of fast forward yeah, okay. this whole thing, right? So so that's that's the love story. That's where we met. That's where it started. And again, as she said, what was interesting to both of us is we were different from what we knew. She came from mm -hmm. an, a missionary American school. So mm -hmm. I was not that bold, right? I come from, again, private school, very Filipino type, you know, mestizo, whatever. Uh, so she was not of that, that kind of mold. And I think that's what drew us both in initially. Mm -hmm. And then there was that God talk. I think that was definitely something that, that we kept actually talking about. What's that so, argue about? <laughs> yeah, even and argue about. So I came from a different religious background from her initially, yeah. and um, we 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 just I would not really had a conversation with someone like her. So we started um, talking about these things, and she hadn't actually met anyone like me with my religious background. So that became kind of um, our discussion point mm -hmm. up until the love story. What was the will. opening question? What was that conversation? Yeah, who started the yeah. God? What, what was that? What was the God? question I in a nutshell how it started I, I can't remember it's just that but we started to talk about spiritual things right no I think it was I asked her I think if I remember correctly I asked her so what school did you come from because I said my impression right she doesn't fit any of the boxes and uh we I, as a freshman you know from Ateneo you go into Ateneo it's kind of like we know who's not from the school and we know the girls and we can kind of so she was different. So I think when I asked her that, she said she came from this school called Faith. And then I asked her, what's that about? And I think that's where this whole conversation about faith came yeah. out. So, so do you know where you're going to go to when you die? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that direct. It's like, what is your religious background? What is that? What does that mean to be a Christian? Because I have a relative who's like that. And when she started explaining all of that, then I'm like, okay, so here's what I believe. And that's, that's the God talk. Mm. Okay, right cool. and then yeah so and then and then i think that we started becoming good friends mm. you know and then sometimes he would come to my soccer games and he would watch and i would wonder why is he watching but you yeah. know okay that's kind of fun and, and for me i did say it's not love at first sight but the moment that we started having those conversations i have to be honest there was 
there was no intention for me to want to know her just as a friend. I was, I was definitely attracted. Like she's, she thinks differently. There's something refreshing about the conversations I had with her. And there was a depth to her that was at the start curious. And that, that whole thing about mm-hmm. the God talk, which, you know, if we fast forward, that became part of my journey into accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior and becoming mm-hmm. a Christian in the way I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, because of all of that, you know, that whole narrative, even finding out what happened to her in her past. So, yeah. so yeah, so that, that I think blossomed if I was to mm-hmm. summarize. Yeah. And I think what I liked about Edric from the very beginning was that he was always very honest and he was not pretentious at mm-hmm. all. I didn't feel like he was one of those guys who was pretending to be something he was not. And so that I, I, I was think- a hip hopper. <laughs> Only that. I did not like that part, but. but you were a hip hopper? <laughs> oh, no. Do you your dance moves? I can't imagine. <laughs> so, anyway, so but I was very transparent, right? I wasn't yeah. that. That's I just enjoyed it at the time. So yeah, I think because you didn't know any better. <laughs> no depth. <laughs> so no, you had depth. So let's let's. So then I think yeah, there was then. a season when I was gone for a long time because I was in the U.S. and I was on a vacation. That was a long vacation, and when I got back, um, Edric came to see me, and he had brought 32 roses I think to the house and he wanted to take me out on a date for every day for every day that was gone and oh that's why 32 my parents realized I think this guy is really interested in our daughter so they said to me hey maybe instead of going on a date why don't you come upstairs and let's have dinner together right why don't why don't we have a meal together with Edric and so I asked Edric, and he was totally game to do that. So he came over, we had dinner. Um, and then that's when my dad asked him, you know, Edric. Have you- so um, have you come to a point in your spiritual journey where, um, <laughs> you know, if you die someday, uh, do you know where you're going to go? <laughs> and um, uh, or, or if you, and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to go to heaven. It's like, okay, what will they say? And then, you know, I answered something like, well, you've been a good person, all that. And he's like, oh, okay, interesting. And then he said, you know, we should talk about that some more sometime when you're free. And immediately, like on cue, <clears throat> all the family members, including the mom and Joy, they're like, hey, why don't you talk about it with him now? Boom, they exited, they left the Bible. <laughs> and that was my first conversation with her dad. You know, he was like, well, let me explain to you, you know, a couple of things. And uh, I think that whole uh, story became the point where, a seed was planted you know so i'm like huh i never saw it that way where it isn't by the good things i do that i'm going to get into heaven yeah. um but he knew that he knew who uh, joyce dad was right like he was no i didn't no he, didn't he was a pastor and he was no, I didn't, no he didn't i didn't know that world no so yeah. so i just knew that you know i knew all i knew that he was doing that but i did not know the implications i did not know ccf i didn't know any of these things so yeah. um it was after that point that i started attending bible studies Mm-hmm. um and i would uh yeah i would attend the bible studies yeah, and then i got group. plugged into a men's group yeah that was very helpful you know um so yeah so fast forward that whole process we actually um in our in our dating stage right we were struggling with uh, immorality yeah. and we've been open and sharing this that's why we can share it to you guys mm-hmm. here um uh we didn't have sex but you know everything kind of surrounding that and because I had already come to a point where mm-hmm. the idea of Christianity, the truths of the gospel were very clear and I accepted that, started bothering me. And of course, for joy, mm-hmm. it bothered her. So long story short, mm-hmm. we broke up. We broke up for half a year mm-hmm. because we did not want to go on to the next level. We had finished college at this point. We were working. And if we were going to go anywhere with our relationship, then we couldn't, I didn't have peace or I didn't, I didn't want to know that I was looking at the next stage without stepping back and overcoming that struggle, mm. you know? So and I think it was, it was like, I think it was very clear in our minds that we really probably really wanted to get married. But like, in my mind, I was thinking, how can God really bless our relationship if we're struggling with the physical aspect of it and yeah. it's not pleasing to him. So that, that scared me and that really convicted me. And so when Edric and I talked about it and we decided to break up, um, that was that was the main reason because we would try, you know, to stay holy, to stay pure, but then it seems like we kept on going into this cycle. So <clears throat> when we decided to do that, it was super hard and we really chose not to communicate with each other. 
and I guess in our hearts, we were thinking if God wants us to end up together, we will. Mm. Uh, but in the meantime, we really have to let it go because it's not pleasing to God. Yeah. And, and part of my thought was, how could I ask God for his go signal to the next stage yeah. if I'm not honoring him right now, if I'm not doing what he wants me to right now? Does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. So I said, I need, to, I need to do this even for me to make sure that my motivations are clear and my mind's not clouded, right? Mm. Um, so we broke up uh, open-ended. We're like, hey, if we end up, great. If not, then we should be open. Mm. And that was the condition. We actually had the condition of maybe not even communicating for the start of that breakup period. And that was hard for me. I think it seemed easier for Joy, but to me it was hard because after, I remember after just one week, I was already working and my first job was, I would deal with CEOs and trying to relocate them. I was in the office leasing business. So I would be in my suit meeting with these guys and I would go off to the toilet and cry. You know, I'd be like, oh, this is hard. So after one week, I called her. And I'm like, hey, I'm willing to change. I'll do this, you know, <laughs> so that we can be, be, be right before God, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God bless Joy. This is, I think, a very pivotal moment for our love story, if you will. She said, that's great, but we need to go the distance and really see God work. That was hard for me. You know, it's the first time in my relationships where I felt like I was now on the rejected end, you know, like, ah. So I took that like a man uh, the most, for the most part. <laughs> and um, fast forward. We reconnected six months later because even as I was growing in my own faith, I was involved in ministry at that time. It was a singles ministry in our, our local church, CCF. You I was, got baptized alone, right? Well, yeah, I, I got, I, I, you know, I, I finished different courses and I got baptized as a believer in this way. Um, and we got, for you, it was. We saw each other at a play in Morocco Theater. And do you remember my skin was all broken yes, out? Yes, yes, yes. And yes, I yes. was like under a lot of stress in my work, in my PR work. And we kind of, you know, said hi to each other and everything. But it wasn't, it wasn't, there wasn't a deep conversation or anything like that. But what happened was this. See, sometime in the middle during that breakup period, I really prayed. I said, God, you know, um, if you want Edric and I to get married, I'm going to ask for three things. The first is that we will tell my parents everything uh -huh. about our relationship, all these details that they don't know about, so that if Edric ever asks for their blessing, they know everything, they know everything mm -hmm. right? And they can say yes, truthfully. Second, um, that he would not date anybody else. <laughs> Okay. I'm remembering and, the second one just now. Yeah, okay, and yeah. the third. And the third one was that he would really ask for my parents' blessing before he ever proposed to me. So, so, so I prayed for those three things. So what happened was during this season when we were not communicating one time out of the blue, you did call me once and then you said, Joy, I, I messaged you first, I think. I, um, we were I, want to, I want to see your parents. I want to tell them about our relationship, what happened. And so he came over randomly one time. I told my parents, hey, Ed Edric wants to talk to you guys about something. It was so terrifying, to be honest. But yeah, he and came just over. As, as a side sharing there, you know, part of what we were going through at DCF, there was a speaker that came and talked about how in our lives, there are relationships we have. And if we don't put closure on them, mm -hmm. they can affect future relationships, right? So I, I went, I had, I've had three girlfriends in my life. Joy's my third. So I, I tried to put good closure on the two. Right, I apologize for how we ended it and the things I did. So Joy was number three. I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that I was clear. That was the backstory to I didn't this. Know that. Yeah, it's the backstory. So I'm like, okay, I want to clear this out, right? And so I reached out. I'm like, hey, yeah, I know we're not supposed to contact each other, but I just want you to know that I want to put closure. I'm sorry for what I did, and I want to be able to let your parents know, right? Let's clear it out because I was going to tell my parents also mm -hmm. that I did it even with the other girlfriends I messed around, and so it's clear. But let's I, just be very clear, okay? Yeah you you stayed a virgin yes okay all these all these just girls like messing around physically yeah, yeah. but by god's grace you virgin yes yes in that Clear. in that sense no actual no sex. sexual intercourse yes. yeah okay okay, okay. Calling out. very so, good thank you so, so anyway so anyway so here she is now she's she gets a call from me and then as she gets the call from me we meet your parents mm -hmm. and dinner again and we're talking to my parents and you know we just confess everything and actually, actually we think... didn't confess everything yet we first i first said you know uh, the reason i wanted oh, to yeah. meet with you is 
uh, you know, I wanted you to know that part of the reason we broke up is mm. not just because we wanted to pray and see if we were going to end up together, but really it's because we had struggled with some things and we, we want to, I want to confess this to you and ask for your forgiveness. And that's when their faces change, very different expressions. So Joy's dad obviously got a little bit more firm and Joy's mom started to tear up and they said, so tell us, what did you do? You know, they yeah. counseled so many people and you, you realize this in hindsight. So. You know, I started saying, well, we did this and they're like, well, what else? And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm telling them here's what we did. And Joy started also <laughs> sharing. Joy started to cry also, tear up, you know, because we're confessing these things. And I'm like, what in the world is happening? <laughs> this is like surreal, you know, uh, anyway. But, but you know, it, it felt good to actually have release it. So when, mm -hmm. I, when we finished sharing this, um, the way that it closed, that whole conversation is, Joy's dad was actually very gentle. He said, thank you for sharing this. You know, at least now we know what we can pray for. And so Joy's mom, of course, she's teary-eyed. She's like, you know, thanks for telling me. said, Edric, you know, even if you never end up marrying our daughter, I want you to know I will always love you like a son. So, of course, I'm like, wow. You know, I never forgot those lines. And then right after she said that, my father-in-law comes in and he goes, what, what do you mean marriage? Nobody's talking about marriage right now. <laughs> so... That was his response. So yeah. that was the closure of that chapter. Mm -hmm. And but because that checked off Joy's list, hey, mm -hmm. check, you know, he wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, and I had told her in that Meralco moment that, you know, oh, how are you doing? Are you seeing anyone? You know, we kind of just very quickly, are you seeing anyone? And I knew that some guys really wanted to pursue her, and sure enough, they did. I think that's why she started breaking out because she couldn't take the fact of other guys being with her you know that's just me anyway so no, <laughs> so but I, I but just, me but for me I never saw anybody I I did get interested but I never pursued and some of my friends were egging me on but I just said you know I've got a lot of things going on I don't want to so that was checklist number two for her so there right? was a guy that 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 tried to court me <clears throat> very nice guy actually Christian also um he was an American guy and there were things about him that I appreciated and we connected also however I really, I told him, you know, I don't think it would be right for me to see you because I'm really praying about something. And honestly, in my heart of hearts, whenever I imagined marriage, it was me walking down the aisle. With Edric. Aww. You're massaging my hand right now. <laughs> He's massaging my hand. <laughs> the coping mechanism. Yeah. I was upset at that dude, to be honest. I knew it from the moment we were playing basketball together and I was dating Joy. I saw, I was like, he's looking at her differently. This, this white guy, right? This American from anyway, there. It's not about him. Okay, so. Yeah. So anyway, he wrote a letter to Joy's dad. He wrote a letter and everything. Like, you know, um, uh, I really want your to, to marry your daughter. Blah, no, blah, not blah. marry. To, to, to court. Not marry. So, anyway, so that's kind of anyway, how the, the anyway, love story did not blossomed. push through. It did, did not push through. through that guy. And I, I felt convicted not to pursue another relationship because it was really my time also to really discover my identity in the Lord and make sure I was whole in the Lord first and really seek him first. And I just felt like in my relationship with Edric, I had tried to, but he became an idol. And so I didn't think it was right to replace now the space that was there with me and the Lord with another guy. With another with another person. And at the end of the day, like I share with you, I really imagined walking down the aisle to Edric and that was my heart's desire. Right. But I was just waiting during um, that season. Yeah, so it was when we reconnected in that kind of Meralco moment, let's call it that, that, you know, these things that she had in her mind got started checking off, you know? So when that happened, she became more open. And me, I think when I was being mentored at that time, I asked these practical questions. How will I know if I'm supposed to go back into a relationship and here's the background. And part of the advice they gave is, you know, you wait on God to speak to you specifically. So I waited on him. I'm like, God, if you want me to go, let me know. Because, you know, there, I, should I pursue someone else? Should I not? And then when I was praying specifically about joy, a verse in the Bible, Exodus 33, verse 13 to 14, was the moment when Moses was also asking God, should I go and, and do this thing you want me to do, which is to lead the people? I'm not sure I should do this. And God said, I will go with you and I will, my presence will go before you and give you peace. And I was like, is this the verse? Mm -hmm. So I spoke to the people who are mentoring. I'm like, hey, so you asked me to pray and here's what I've come across. And they're like, that looks like it. So Edric, why don't you go? And the, the long story short is that's when we got back together. Yeah. And immediately as we got back together, I already proposed to her. I got the blessing of my parents, her parents, and we ended up um, 
married our, our, and, our engagement was super short it was like four two months. three months yeah four months, oh, four months. how was the proposal yeah. like <laughs> okay. okay you can describe this I'm gonna get so that. there was one evening when edric said hey let's why don't we have dinner in your old house in valley golf yeah. um, because our family had moved to to ortiga's area um, after the robbery um that yeah. happened in our house yeah. my parents to about two years after or a year after we moved um into ortiga's area so i had never showed the old house to Edric, um, you know, I, I, and so when he suggested, hey, why don't we have dinner? No, no, he didn't say, why don't we have dinner? It was a group date. Jenny, Jenny and, and Paul. Paul, who said, hey, Jenny's mom, because they were renting, Jenny's parents were renting, Jenny is my sister-in-law. Let me explain it. <laughs> Condensed version. <laughs> okay, Jenny's mom <laughs> said, invited us to dinner the four of us my brother paul and my 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 not yet sister-in-law jenny and then edric and myself so, so they we were, were dating they were to, dating at that time paul we were and supposed jenny were dating. to go there for dinner and then so i got ready and everything i was super excited because i was like oh yes finally edric can see the, the house, house where i grew up and so i got ready and then edric was late and he wasn't just late my brother and sister-in-law called and they said um you know what we, we probably won't make it because we're still coming from something uh we're coming from Pasai from um and we were gonna be late and so I was like I was up, I was a little bit upset actually because I was stressed about the mm. the situation because I was like you know what Linda Reed is cooking for us we can't be late this is not even our engagement Paul Paul you were the one that invited us to this you have to be there how can Edric and I just go to the house anyway to make a long story short we ended up going anyway and my mom she was like is that what you're gonna wear maybe you should change to something else I'm like huh Okay, so I, I I changed to something else. She's like, oh, that's so much nicer. And then what? As I left, Edric finally came to pick me up. And then as I left, they were all on the stairs and they're saying bye. Okay, have a good time. And I'm like, this is really weird because they don't really do that. <laughs> so we 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 go off. We, it was an amazing dinner. It was all my favorite foods. I'm like, wow, you know, Linda Reed really knows how to cook really good food, and it's all my favorite food. And then Edric was just kind of you know, smiling. And then he had told me, oh, by the way, when you come, hey, why don't we do something super fun? Why don't you bring all the paraphernalia from when we were dating and let's look through it. I'm like, that is a really weird request, but okay, I'll do it. So <laughs> I brought it. So we're going through all this stuff. And then he brings out this old Bible of his, like the first Bible he ever had. And he asked me, so, you know, what's God been teaching you lately? And I said, well, you know, God's been teaching me this and this. And that. I like to really trust him and in Moses, the story. And he's like, oh, you know, I've also been reading about Moses. And you know what God showed me? And he pulls out the Bible and he, he says, look at this passage. So he makes me turn to it. And it's Genesis, right? No, Exodus, it's Exodus. It's Exodus. Here. No, here Exodus first, it's right here. So it, it's wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's try the Bible. Sorry. <laughs> it's got a lot of junk in it. Don't drop it. Okay, okay. So, so the passage is here. Okay. He, he hmm. highlighted it. And then, so it says there, right? I myself, the Lord answered, will go along to give you rest. I'm looking here, but on this page, it says, will you <laughs> marry me? And he put the ring here. Oh. So, and the, the tip of the question mark was um, the ring. So show again, show again. I, I didn't see it at first. Show again, I was, show again, show again. Oh yeah. Wow. wow. That's creative. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So then when I saw it, I was looking at it and I was in disbelief and I didn't answer right away because my third request was that he had asked my parents. So I didn't feel like I could say yes right away. So I was looking and then yeah. I think the Holy Spirit told him, tell her, that he said, oh, by the way, I got the blessing of my parents and, and your, your parents. parents. And they said, yes. So, yeah. Yeah, of course, I said, okay, yeah. yes, then, of course, I'll marry you. So. Yay. <laughs> wow. So 20 years later. So we're 20 years married this year. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, when you look back, it's not a perfect journey, but um, we definitely uh, uh, learned some things in the ride. Yeah. Uh, and I would marry Joy all over again in a heartbeat. So that's Please the law. Please tell us 
uh, and share with our audience, why do you think it's important to remain pure before marriage, even mm -hmm. though um, the world now shows that, you know, having sex outside of marriage is the norm? Mm. Do you want to go first? Sure, yeah. So the way I answer that question is, you know, I think the, the more fundamental question is why should I stay pure at all, right? Whether it's for marriage, in marriage, why should I even bother, right? Why should I try and raise that standard, quote unquote, if you will? So and, until that question is answered, then, you know, the answers on why stay pure in marriage or in a relationship will not make sense. So I would step back. And for me, as I shared, right, a large part of why that became important is because I realized that I'm not living for myself. It's not about me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing to work. I'm pushing to do many things, not because of me, but because I, I have been lovingly designed with a purpose in this life by God. And if I embrace that as I have, then I begin to ask myself, then if I've been designed by him, then how should I live my life? So that will make sense. So as I stepped back and answered that, I realized, okay, there's, there are principles from the Bible, like I showed you earlier. And one of them is related to purity, how mm -hmm. um, I need to be able to hold a high standard, not for, not so much for God, because he doesn't get anything from me, but for my sake, because that's how he's designed me. And it's, if I follow that design, then I will be, I will actually, maybe ironically to some people or counterintuitively to some people actually have a happier, more fulfilled, purposeful life. Mm -hmm. So, so that's kind of the, the thought process I wanted to encourage people to have. It's not so much about whether I should stay pure in a relationship. It's why should I even think about purity for myself? I mean, how will I even know what things I should and should not do? Mm -hmm. And if you step back, as I had, then you really want to say, okay, there is someone who's designed me and knows what is best for me. And if I do that, then I will live a fulfilled life, not a perfect one, but a fulfilled one. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's, that's where you need to step back first. So even in the context of relationships now, then that same thinking process happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, purity is something, as Edric said, that we still have to pursue even in marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because you're married doesn't mean all of a sudden that no temptation. all those temptations go away. Yeah. We know this because you know people who fall. So I think it's it's a standard that God continually wants us to, to um, live up to because he wants to bless us and because he wants what's best for us. And I think a lot of times we have the impression that if we do things our way, or the world's way that we're going to be happier but the very opposite is true you may be happy maybe momentarily but in the end the bible says there is a way that leads unto death you know man's way doesn't always lead it doesn't lead to life right so so what seems right to a man may lead to death and i think in the case of purity and even now looking back as we counsel couples as we uh, have journeyed in the faith we can really see the blessings in the marriages of those who have stayed pure and really tried to honor that. Or if they made a mistake, yeah. that they repented and they you know, tried to fix it to honor God and how then God has honored their marriage. And when the Bible says, you know, you keep the marriage bed undefiled, it's supposed to be held in honor above all. So that also applies now. Like even with what we watch, what we listen to, if we're watching a movie and there's a lot of sexual content in it, Edric and I just don't feel peace about it. And we walk away from that because we don't think that that's honoring to God. So purity- well, started to walk away in the bedroom now. I just click. We just click. <laughs> but so purity is, is a standard, whether you're married or single, and it's not because any of us dictate it. It's because as Edric said, it's what God designed for us to, to, to be, is be holy as I am holy. And, yeah, and there are practical consequences, right? So I said, yeah. the first question is that, why should you even consider these standards, right? You need to answer that question. But when it starts to make sense, then even practical considerations, like if you don't stay pure, there's all this disease now, mm. right? There's the chance that you can get pregnant even prior. And that just creates a whole world of problems. Yeah. Um, and even when you get into marriage, all of the damage, if you will, or the baggage that you have will affect the, the way you enjoy sex and appreciate mm. the intimacy in marriage. You know, when the Bible says, right, that <clears throat> a husband shall leave his father and his mother and the two shall become one flesh. Mm. That oneness of flesh, there was no marriage ceremony that we know of in the garden. What we know is that they had sex and, and that, that was, was, that was That's it. marriage. That's what marriage was. And I don't think we realize that every time 
we have sexual immorality with somebody, something that's outside of marriage where you, where you, where you have intercourse or you do sexual things, you're creating this oneness, this bond that, that God did not intend for us to have outside, outside. of marriage. Mm-hmm. It's a bond that's supposed to help you really connect with each mm-hmm. other in marriage. It's mm-hmm. like it's supposed to be like a glue. But the more you do that with everybody else, it's like it loses its, its power in the marriage when you eventually get married. married. And that's why a lot of people who struggled with sexual immorality outside of marriage Ma- marriage doesn't automatically make them want to stop doing that. It's yeah. very hard. And, and maybe a last practical principle also is, and since we're 20 years married, right? And we're being surrounded with people who are, like some are in their 50s plus or, or so. And, and, you know, the, the libido surrounding purity begins to wane <laughs> on a very practical note, right? And you, you want to ask yourself, oh. you want to ask yourself, what is holding your marriage together? And if at the start, you know, you're so enamored by these, you know, sexual things and all that, and there is nothing else, like you're not able to connect on a deeper level. You don't enjoy the same things. You're not able to talk about life. You're not able to wrestle through things together. Then it will really be founded on something artificial. When that starts to wane, what then? Yeah. Right. So that's, mm. that's part of the way that I would help people yeah. think through it. You know, you don't always have to hit them with like churchy or, but it's, it's a very practical consideration mm. as well. There are consequences practically there are relational consequences and challenges later on when the novelty if you will starts to wear out what is it that's holding you together mm. um you know and even the complexities of having kids and how you know as as we know right you can't always have sexual intimacy because there's a new baby and all that so then what holds you together yeah right so, so really it's the commitment first yeah. before the act right yeah. and that's god's design yeah. that it happens in a committed relationship that covenant relationship so that there is that sense of security and that's why if you look at the passage in scripture shortly after that it says they were naked and not ashamed mm-hmm. so that's how god designed it right if, if the commitment is there that one that that Purity. marriage is there that's the that's the commitment mm. and you've chosen to say okay for better for worse we're never going to part unless death parts us and then you have sex you, you can be naked and unashamed because you, you feel absolutely secure with this person. That's how God designed it. But if you've been giving yourself left and right, and then you've come into the marriage and you're not sure who was, who was my husband slept with and how do I compare? Or you know, I had this experience and it doesn't seem as great. And you know what I mean? That's not how God designed it. It's supposed to be the commitment first, that, that commitment before him, the marriage commitment. And then that sex is... Amen. Then just an expression of that commitment, but it's supposed to be the commitment. First. I guess on a very, very crude note, uh, you sorry, this alliance, but on a very crude note, I would compare it to buying a new car and a secondhand car. Let's just put it that way, right? <laughs> all of the issues, all of the questions on a secondhand car versus a new car. I mean, that's kind of what purity is. It's like, it's a new experience. It's wonderful. I don't have any fears, worries, because it's brand new i mean that's i guess that's for also both you want for both of you while, while you guys were answering the question i i, um, I remember the youtube uh, ted talk that i watched last night as i was after i watched your video on sex and marriage and the speaker you know secular was talking about sexless marriages and one of the reasons for sexless marriages where couples only have sex once twice or three times a year wow Wow. Yeah, sexless, <laughs> or maybe not even. There's a couple that didn't have, haven't had sex for seven years. Okay. And they're, wow. and they're totally unhappy. And one of the reasons was because they all had premarital sex mm. with they, each other or with other no, with, with the, even with each other. That they, 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 mm. they were indulging themselves. And they, and, and the uh, sex therapist said that somehow in her studies affects, mm. you know, it, it affects the libido and it affects how you um, make are love and, and in are intimate in your marriage. Somehow, premarital mm-hmm. sex just dampens your your um, your sex life. There you go. See, exactly. Super interesting. Very practical. Like that's I said, super yeah. Interesting, and I think God wants to bless context, us. Yeah, yeah. God wants to bless. I think that's where we have to come we're, from. We're man. gonna <laughs> move into the last section, or sure. Yes, she asks. I actually yes. have another follow up question. Sure. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, given given your background, Joy Dubai, uh, you wrote a story of um, uh, the book. The, uh, yeah, you you wrote a book about uh, what happened to you when you were you when, know, a, good when God a good God allows, allows rape, mm-hmm. and um, 
and now that you're in uh you're in marriage and of course you have uh, encountered sex in two different ways you know mm. one is violent uh mm. sex and then this one is within marriage was was your past um was that like an obstacle to you enjoying sex now in marriage with Edric yeah you know that is a great question and i would say this is where we see the healing of god um and how he restores things because the way i felt with edric even in my relationship with him i already felt safe to begin with and so when we eventually had sexual intercourse in marriage i felt like it was in the it was the way it was supposed to be this is how i really should have experienced it all along not the defiling way that i experienced and it was such a contrast that it wasn't like an apples to apples thing. And I think that that's, that's the amazing thing about how God restores things, right? That he, he allowed me to see a different way of how he designed sex. And because I saw that it was radically different, I didn't, we didn't have issues with it by God's grace. I mean, we have six kids. We could... I think at the start, <laughs> you thought it was painful. Remember that? I remember that. Yeah, yeah. At the start, it even felt remember, like I, I was, was a virgin again. Yeah. yeah, I was a virgin, right? So it's yeah. my first time. So We didn't know what we were doing, actually. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, like, even if I had experienced all these things, it was <laughs> like a totally new thing once again. Like, you know, how the Bible they, says that God makes all things new. And it just felt like that also. And so... There are times, of course, like maybe certain things I, I have memories yeah. and because it, it's something that was similar or whatever, although it's a different context. And I just have to remember that this is not the same thing, mm -hmm. right? And sex is not about me all the time. It's really, it's something I'm giving to my husband. But you know, sex is a very, wait, just wait, just let okay. me explain this part, okay? <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, the Bible says your body's not your own. And, and I'll say what, because I feel that way. I have to give my body to you. <laughs> you always want to give your body to me. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. <laughs> so, you know, I think it was, it was, I, I learned also to see sex for the way that God designed it. It's really, it's really supposed to be a selfless thing also, where it's something that I can also do to serve Edric, to be a blessing to him, to love him, to show my love for him. Mm. So it's not just what I can get out of it or what it, you know, this was my experience. So sorry, babe, you know, we can't do it because it reminds me of that. And so I think that's also how God helped me to reframe things. Right. Um, right. That, that this is what sex is supposed to be in marriage. And how can I also be a blessing to my husband? Um, because now that I, I was forced into um, surgical menopause, it's gotten harder. Right. So I always, always have to think also, how can I be a blessing to my husband? It's not just about me or what's convenient for me. I guess I've also learned how to also make it enjoyable for you. I think that's also <laughs> part of it. I must mean, be very honest here. No, yeah, but right. yeah. it's not a one you way. You hear that because guys yeah. need to hear that. Please share yeah, there, that. There's, 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 I'm so blessed by that learn. answer. I'm so blessed because it just shows how God heals and really yeah. makes Restores. all things new again. Because yeah. as I was listening to that uh, video last, last night in TED, the sexless, that couple that didn't have sex for seven years, never consummated, was because the, the wife was sexually abused mm -hmm. um, and had a very traumatic experience when she was mm -hmm. younger. And so and, she and carried so she, it into the yeah, she carried into she carried that into their relationship. And mm -hmm. but this shows that God is so faithful in restoring things. So yeah. And God. I think Edric was saying, right, he's also very sensitive and and um what were we gonna say? Yeah, what do you mean? Are you gonna say no, something? I, anyway, they can edit this after. It's so funny. They can so, edit this, yeah. yeah. No, but I think that you were no, saying I was very sensitive to joy. I tried to find, you know, we talked about it and we tell mm. couples if you want to enjoy sex, you have to talk about it. Does that work for you? How does that feel? Is this um, and I was and I was you? very, very, very sensitive to the fact that she had come from that background, you know. So I would ask her, you know, uh, what things conjure up those the mm. trauma you know is this working and i think because we were working on it together um mm. that also made it i'd like to say enjoyable or holy right and to be honest i felt safe with him also sexually speaking because he had not had sex with any of his girlfriends so i didn't ever feel like you know i was being used or whatever mm. 
only when I found out later on, later on, but he did, he stopped it in marriage, that he had had experiences with pornography. And that really affected me. Because for me, that was more similar a thing mm. that out of context way of enjoying sex, sexual mm. stuff, mm. not according to God's design, that affected me more um, yeah. when I found that out. But we worked through that. And by God's grace, he had stopped that in marriage. So so that's that's why I think I think that's how couples can also if you want to experience good sex, that's why the purity is necessary. You keep your mind, your heart pure, even with the things you watch, what you expose yourself to. And then God is what makes the sex amazing, according to his design, even in the marriage. So I think that helped a lot because as women, we need to feel safe. Right. right. We need to feel like we are the most attractive person to our husbands. And when we give ourselves physically we don't want to feel like we're being compared or we fall short and God never meant the experience to be like that. Right. So, so I think that that matters that, that the husbands also really try their best to guard their eyes, to stay pure. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I remember when, when Mary and I got married, we were not virgins, of course, because we were both yeah. on our second marriages. I as a widower and she was a, uh, a divorcee. divorcee. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we decided to stay pure until the wedding night. Although and, we had struggles as well. Yeah. But, yeah. but by God's grace, we were able to remain. But clear. I remember on our honeymoon when we went to uh, Thailand and we and we, we had sex and then we just said, we were like praising God. Yes, this is the way it should be. Yeah, like, how we wish we could tell everyone like, to remain pure before marriage so that they, they can experience this. <laughs> yeah. 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 We read Song of Solomon before we had sex. <laughs> okay. That's well, so right holy. <laughs> The pomegranates. Oh, right. we, I, I the heard some clusters. <laughs> I wanted. I just wanted to share. You were talking about this TED talk that you were watching last night about how sexless marriages happen is because they had premarital sex. Case mm. in point, that mm. happened with me and my first husband. We mm. were having premarital mm. sex, mm. but then um, mm. when we got married, we didn't even consummate mm. at our wedding night, uh, and even oh. during our honeymoon, and we had we had we had months without sex and so i was a very rejected and miserable wife in spite of me looking also you know yeah. glamorous beauty. and happy yeah. and all yeah. yeah and which is why it also only lasted for two and a half years plus pornography was uh, was part of our mm. intimate uh time together and mm. uh, it, it really wasn't god's design mm. so yeah, yeah. And that's common huh that's common where we're, we're, we've been asked by couples, is it okay if we watch pornography together so that we can have better sex? And really that's not God's design also. And it doesn't in the long run work out. And but you know like what? Inviting another woman into bed. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and your story, I'm so blessed by it because it just shows how God redeems things, right? Like even if you've had made certain choices with God, he really makes all things new again. Look at you guys. And now you have two kids and I know if you still could have another one, you would, I, yeah, you would, I mean, you gave birth to two kids, but if you could, you probably would even have a third. God willing, God willing. <laughs> her, <laughs> doctor said, her doctor said that she can still go for one more. <laughs> Is Dr. Paula? No, Dr. Uh, Rebecca Singson. I replied to her, can I catch up on sleep first? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, Okay. So yeah, so follow-up question. Since we're on the subject that's not asked, you know, sex and marriage, how do you, like you have six kids. So do you still have a, how do you still have a sex life with six kids, one yeah. after another? And I don't think anything has, I, I think the question is, was there anything that has changed, right? Mm. And I think the reality is, even after having six kids, certain things have not changed. I, 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 when I say that on a very practical note, what has helped us keep the sex amazing, if you will, or the intimacy um, uh, intimate <laughs> is there have been some things that Joy has been very good at uh, safeguarding and myself. So for example, from the very start, Joy said for her, she must always preserve this sense of mystery, right? She will not change in front of me. She will not use the toilet in front of me. And, you know, if, if we, she will use the shower generally, you know, generally speaking, and we don't want to overshare here, it's got to be something where, whoa, it's also mysterious. It's not like we're doing the practical things and we're just changing in front of each other. That yeah. has That is something that we've heard and we now experience can be a killer because it becomes, it's not mysterious. It's not exciting to see your spouse. Oh, wow. You know, so like, that was I one. I, I won't poop in 
front of Edric. Yeah, okay? so she would never do that. You know, she tries to be a lady like I that. She won't that. fart and do these things. You know, so anyway, <laughs> that's one already. That's one practical thing. The other, and I love that how Joy talks about this, and I'm going to speak on your behalf. She she shares, you know, that we are each only we are each other's only option for sex. So if that's the case, then she does her part to make sure that she stays as quote unquote attractive or fit as possible, right? So she will make sure she dresses up properly. She works out, she eats well because we are each other's only option for, for sex. So, so that was another very practical thing. She didn't just let herself go and say, wala, mag-asawa na tayo. So as is where is, right? Take me as I, as I am. She really made an effort and I really appreciated that. That I think helped me as a man, especially. No? Um, so, so those would be the two preserving that sense of mystery and trying to make an effort. She doesn't have to be like, I never, and just make it clear to everybody, I never put the pressure on, you better look this certain way, like how you were before, or you know, you need to have this certain body or this certain look. I've never put that standard, which is why I'm, I'm sharing it because she imposed that on herself. And I'm saying that I appreciated it because when I look back all these years to your question, that mattered, you know, that she made an effort to look as best she could, the way she dressed, the way she exercised and, and ate properly. So those would be, I think, already the ways that the sex has been, has continued to be intimate, right? Yeah, and I think that it's important, right, that you always still communicate with each other, have open communication, yeah. really enjoy one another, still have romantic um, encounters with each other that aren't just about sex, uh, the physical part, but building intimacy with each other. And so then that then the sex becomes a natural part of that. Especially so there me, are times, yeah. right, when we're not communicating well, when things aren't okay in our relationship, and then the sex part may suffer. But as long as we're safeguarding also our own relationship with God and our marriage by really spending time with each other, we still have date nights um, to really connect, then that makes for more conducive um, intimacy. intimacy in the marriage. So I yeah. think that that's also helped. And I think even when you have six kids, we we find ways to there's first there's several rooms in the house but oh on a practical yeah, note space <laughs> physical space and all that <laughs> yeah no so so but i'm trying to talk about how the intimacy remains intimate right how it continues on and it doesn't kind of wane and those are the reasons why yeah. even if we've had six kids because yeah, how, how do you keep the romance going how do you yeah. keep the fire in the so, romance going? yeah, yeah I, I think that the the point really is that that's what sex is at the end of the day it is a an indicator of intimacy so if we're able to guard intimacy and in, on all levels for women it's different for men obviously for us it's, it's a lot more physical and visual for them for joy at least what i've seen for for ladies is it's a lot relational right it's a lot of the the build-up my father-in-law when he gives talks about this at retreats he says if you want to have sex on monday you start on and if you want to have sex on sunday you start on monday <laughs> you know so yes. So in other so words, long. in other words, the whole week and everything happening around that's that is long. part of the experience yeah. for it's not just, hey, let's have sex right now, right? So yeah, that's I, intimacy. It's, it's a lot, it's a large indicator of the relationship, how you're doing, how you so, so we've asked each other also, right? Like how often is often enough? And I think it's important for a wife, especially to ask her husband that, because for some husbands it may be different. And every wife, I think, should ask her husband, how often do you do you would would you like to have sex? And then we just have to do our part to do our best to make ourselves available also. And, you know, I've had to learn that to be more responsive um, because sometimes I'm not responsive enough and it hurts Edric's feelings. So I've, I've had to change in that feeling. way or to initiate more, <laughs> right? Where it's not always you initiating. And remember that, that talk we heard of Craig Groeschel where he said, okay, for the men, don't always use the same approach. Yeah. Like, oh, he's so like, do you want to, oh, so do you want to? Yeah. <laughs> His sex tip for guys and girls is very simple. He said the sex tip for the guys is change your approach. Yeah. Like, don't always, oh, tada, let's have sex. Change your approach, right? Make it different, make it for the guys. For the girls, it's make um, an approach. Make an approach. Any approach. <laughs> Any approach. Make an approach. Any so, approach. So, no, anyway, so that, 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 I, like, I like that. Huh? I like what she said. Like, I, I have, I first time I heard that, like, ask your husband. How often is often enough? Mm -hmm. How often? Yeah. yeah, but what if uh, no, What if you're not in the mood? Like you you said to yourself, you went through medical surgery, you, you went through surgery, and now uh, it has affected your um, your your mood for intimacy, your, your libido. I mean, how do you manage that as a couple? 
You know, it was honestly really hard. I think there was a whole stretch of um, 2019, right after my surgery, where I was also dealing with some depression because of what happened. And I was had a newborn. And, you know, Edric was still the same person he was, still very young and <laughs> energetic, like a bouncing rabbit. And here I am, like, I, really, like I, I turned, you know, I turned 20 years older. And so I really prayed. I prayed about it a lot. And I would pray, Lord, you know, really give me the desire to, and you be the one to help us have good sex life. Because remember, God designed sex. And so it's really up to him also to help us when we're struggling in this area. And I just had to, to frame it properly that I have to think about, you know, that's what marriage is, right? You think about the needs of your spouse and love is sacrificial. And there are times when sex for a woman has to be like a form of unconditional love because maybe you don't feel like it, but it's important to your husband. So yes, you can talk about it. And there have been times where I said, babe, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just so tired or, you know, I don't feel like it. And then he shows unconditional love to me by also responding with grace and not demanding it. So I think it goes both ways in a healthy marriage, but there are times of course, where I really have to adjust and say, well, this is how I would like um, to also show him and, and respond to him and let him know that I value him. I appreciate him and I want to, to have sex with him. And so I just say, Lord, please help me to really enjoy it also and help me to be into it. And isn't that the kind of prayer that God would love to answer? Isn't that the kind of prayer that it says, you know, um, whatever you ask for in my name, you will receive <laughs> one of those prayers. So, so yeah, I think it's also just, just realizing that it's my way of also honoring my husband and respecting him and meeting a need in him that, cause I don't want him to stumble. I don't want him to, you know, we used to joke about this. I like how you say him, like third person. Like, I'm yeah, like, you. <laughs> 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 you know you would tell me after three days honor me of, honor of, me after three days of no sex how you would start to like find everything that resembles a woman kind of attractive and so this is how we also have to safeguard our spouses it's also our way of protecting them from sexual immorality and it goes both the bible ways. says that right yeah protecting so, them. Yeah, so right because if a woman doesn't feel valued if the husband's not responsive to her then she, there's that need and she's going to want to feel like she's attractive to somebody. And so it puts her also in a, in a position to be tempted. So I think, it, and Edric is very good about being affirming. And I think that's important also as a guy that you really affirm your spouse. You make them feel like they're attractive, even if they don't always feel like it. Like there are times I really didn't feel like it, but he would yeah, be very affirming. So that's one thing I appreciate about you too. Really? <laughs> Hindi sa subject. Oh, hindi kasi their whole love story is around S I M one 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 two one three. Huh? Sex and marriage. Sex and marriage one 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 two one three. Anyway, just feel free to edit as you you know. What you guys can do. I mean, this is wonderful because a lot of people need to hear. Yeah, it's like a seminar, and sometimes in the seminar you don't hear this. It's just like you're guarded and. Your turn to ask a question. I, yeah, but we have to be respectful of their time because okay. we are we're really way over. It's, it's, three of, it's almost three. three of, I have five minutes to my next call. You do? <laughs> I do, yeah. Oh. So. I can stay here all day. but <laughs> <laughs> You can do a part maybe, two. So maybe yeah. closing questions since Edric doesn't have... Yeah. Um, you know, he, has, he has another call. And you can ask your questions since Edric has to leave. Oh, so okay. you, can ask, yeah. you can ask your wife questions. I'll ask my... My What's husband. Important question. advice about being a husband you've ever received from anyone. Advice about being a husband. I would say there's two things, right? First is being a spouse first. One of the best and wisest pieces of advice I got is you don't go into the marriage for you. It's not a you marriage. It's not an I marriage. It's a you marriage. So I, I, I need to go into it thinking not so much about what I will get out of it, what she will do for me, but instead what I can do for her. And that's simple, but fundamental mindset shift has helped me. And I learned this later on in the marriage, right? Um, so that's been very helpful. Is yes, the more I think about how I can um, look to Joy's needs, you know, versus what she can do for me, the less frustrated I become. And actually the more joyful I can become because I see that and I'm not demanding from her, not always present, but that is one. And then the other on the role of the husband is 
Um, I love how when I first got married, the guy that performed my wedding gave me this simple picture. He said, Edric, you're a gardener and your wife is like a garden. And your job is to make sure that she blooms. And if you, I see her and we see what's happening and she's blooming, then you're doing a good job. If not, then that's on you, right? Um, so when you look at the Bible, how it says we are to nourish and cherish our spouses, on a very practical note, the difference between nourishing and cherishing would be this whole idea of a garden where on the one hand, um, uh, nourish has the picture of being able to provide for her needs in such a way that she will literally bloom. So what are her gifts? What are her strengths? How can I help that come alive? So like she, she loves writing and I kind of had a hand in helping her birth this whole blog and whatever, right? Because that's what I thought that a good husband should do as a good gardener, nourishing. Then cherishing is all about making her feel loved, making sure that she, she if I ask her, do you feel loved in the things I do? And the love languages, which, which you were also calling earlier, are, are things that, I need to do. And if I do that well, she feels loved, cherished, then I'm a good gardener. So those would be kind of the big two for me uh, already. Um, that I, I'm in general, marriage is not about what I will get so much as what I can give. And I need to think about the you versus I. And then that second part about my distinct role as a man and a husband is to be a good gardener who will nourish and cherish joy. Kailangan madidigan talaga ang garden. <laughs> Tama, yun. Parang loaded statement yan, RD. Eh. Speaking of sex, di ba? Parang iba yung dating eh. After the sex talk, that just Sorry. sounded like, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mean, about celebrity, celebrity kasi this uh, past. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We should be asking you, <laughs> how is your yeah, sex you, life? Yeah. How are you making it? <laughs> okay, so, so uh, but... we'll let, we'll let. Edric go. All right. And, thank uh, you, Edric. Thanks so much, Edric, yeah, for yeah, yeah. blessing us with your presence and your story and your advice. Thanks, Art. Hey, we can have a part too, okay? We love you guys and praying oh, for you. Yeah. Picture that. We'll invite you also to Monday. Yeah. We'll, we'll invite, invite you to Monday. Monday. One last picture. Picture, baby. Picture. We, have, we have to put you guys on the hot seat, the man. Hot seat. Yeah, Our, yeah. Roberto, hot seat. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks you, guys. Eric. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so join my last question. And I'll take off from RD's question. What is the best advice as a wife did you receive and you'd like to share with other wives? I think one of the, maybe not necessarily best advice, but one of the best examples I saw was really in my mom because she has always been a selfless person. And I really feel like coming into the marriage at the beginning, I was a very selfish person. Like it was always about well, I don't want to be submissive because Edric's not like this and he can be temperamental. So I was reacting to all those things in a very selfish, self-centered way. And that's one of the things that I had to learn from my mom's example was, you know, marriage is not about you. And in fact, it's not even about Edric, it's about God. And so that's that was a major change, a major shift in my perspective on marriage that helped me. Um, first, my mom's selflessness, but then when I read a book by John Piper called This Momentary Marriage, A Parable of Permanence, where he talked about how marriage is the doing of God and the display of God, and it's meant to bring him glory, and it's meant to be a reflection of his love for the church, and when I saw that, it was like I was so convicted, like in my marriage, am I the kind of wife that encourages Edric to love God more? Am I the kind of wife that if my kids see me and my dynamic with Edric, they would see the love of God manifest in that? They would be attracted to Christ? And if people see our marriage outside, in public, or in private, at home, with our household help, do they see Christ in our marriage? And is that what our marriage is about? And I think that was a significant change for me. That's one of the most radical things that helped me to to really also change in the areas where I needed to be it being a submit more submissive person more respectful because there had to be a why that was greater than just okay I'm going to do this for edge I'm going to do it for myself no it's really doing it for the Lord so yes that helped me a lot yeah yeah, like it, it convicts me because there are many times when I'm still selfish yeah. <laughs> a selfish wife 
Yeah, so it's very convicting for me as well because there are many times, even though I feel like I'm a good wife, but I could be better. And the, and mm-hmm. and looking at um your 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 sharing now and what you have, what your mom has modeled to you, parang I mm-hmm. I feel like there's so much more that I can improve in terms of respect, in terms of mm-hmm. being more selfless. Uh, And yeah, and being a good model for the rest of the household, including mm. my kids and the house club. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question for supposed to be Edric and yourself, but um, about finances. How do you mm. how do you manage or steward the finances? What what is what kind of agree, agreements do you have or principles? Yeah. Um, you know, when I came into the marriage, I didn't know much about how to budget things and Edric also had to train me. So at the beginning, he didn't give me as many roles when it came to the financial management of our, you know, our resources. But as I learned more and more how to be a better steward, then he gave me more and more responsibility. And we would do this on a yearly basis. We would talk about our financial plans for the year, the goals, the budgets, uh, what we had to work with. And there would be seasons when he would say, sweetheart, we have to cut back this year because it's not going to be, you know, as good a year. So this is where you're going to have to adjust. And then I just had to be on board about it. But I think talking about the roles, what my responsibilities were when it came to financial management, what his responsibilities would be helped a lot. And I don't think we talk a lot about money roles in marriages. And I think this is where there can be a lot of friction because there's a lot of assumption, a lot of sometimes judgment like if your spouse is spending a certain way you start to get upset because hey you know you're not supposed to do that but you haven't really talked about anything so so this is where as the years progress um edric assigned me to now be the i am the coo chief operating is that what it is <laughs> yeah. coo when it comes to the the money so i manage all the budgets a present for our household for our expenses everything all the bills all of that But he is the CIO, so he's he's the one that does investments. He can't worry about the day to day stuff, and so he turns over everything to me, and I have to manage everything. And then he keeps a certain fund of that. That's like a non discretionary fund. Since I manage all the budget, then this is what we call a fun fund. So he has a little fun fund that he has for whatever he wants to take me on a date. He doesn't doesn't have to ask from me, the fund manager you know, for that amount, because he has his own little budget to work with. But everything, all of that has been plugged into a spreadsheet. And we have a Google spreadsheet that we share where we track our monthly um, expenses. And then we just did an evaluation. After six months, we looked at it. Oh, okay, we, we didn't spend as much in this area. We can adjust here, or we can add more to food because as many of us know we're spending a lot for food these days, because that's the main expense during the pandemic, right? So that helped a lot. I think having these open conversations, the realities, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Where I would have to be on board about how we don't have unlimited resources. So what do we have to work with? And I have to learn to adjust my own lifestyle or my own preferences and not compare, right? To other people who I know who maybe have more. And then as God gave more, now how do we be a good steward of what he has given us? And we still stick to a budget and we make sure there's a giving fund as well, because we really believe as God gives more, how can we also be a blessing to others? And it's amazing how God has worked in our finances um, because as we give, he gives more. So I think you have to talk about your roles as a husband and wife. You have to talk about, um, of course, what your dreams are also, what can we work towards, but what are the realities at present? And how can we give to people who are in need? And tithing, he always made sure that that was one of the first things we did was tithe. Mm -hmm. And he said, we will keep tithing more and more, not just 10%, but as God grows our income, why don't we increase our giving even to him? And I think that's been also um, just a blessing for me to see that that God put that in his heart to do. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so convicting as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of the things that we should be doing too. <laughs> But just, 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 you know, this is now, okay? We messed up a lot yeah. before. So this is like in the process of marriage and learning how to be a better steward. These are the things that God has taught us. But it all, wasn't like at the beginning. I was terrible at budgeting. I was terrible. I would I would overspend and I would say to educate, you know, I really need help. Can you pay for my credit bill, credit card bill? <laughs> and 
I had to learn. I, I just, I, I didn't know uh, as a young wife would never budgeted anything. I had to grow in that area. But how, you said that he turned over to you, you know, as COO of the household and the budget. How many years yeah. did it take before he like fully? Oh my, like uh, maybe 15 years. <laughs> I really, you know, I really was not the best with numbers and with tracking things. Maybe, maybe less, maybe the last, yeah, 14, 14 years, <laughs> 14 years before he turned it over to me. So it took a while. Yeah. I had to, I had to earn my stripes. <laughs> I don't know. We're so, questions? we're so busog. We're so full of, um, yeah, things to think about. And yeah, a lot of things to chew about. And I think all, you know, the viewers right now really appreciate your candor and your transparency and your honesty. So uh, maybe we can close this. If you could like give me one more, maybe the spirit is impressing upon you. One more thing to share to married couples or to, to wives. And then maybe you can close in prayer. Yeah. You know, um, there was a point in my marriage where I really started to look to Edric to feel good about myself and to feel valued. And while I think that's part of God's design, like God puts two people together so you enrich one another, I think it came to a point once again where I had this tendency to make a person an idol. And I think that was Edric in my marriage as well. And I had to realize that I have to be complete in the Lord and fully satisfied with my own relationship with God, that however Edric is, it's just a bonus. If he's a great husband, if he treats me well, if he's loving, if he's romantic, if he's sweet, that's a bonus, but not necessary for me to be happy and to be joyful because that joy comes from and should come from the Lord. And I had to learn that also the hard way sometimes because I would I knew that there was something wrong because every time he would do something that upset me, I would react in an ungodly way where I would maybe withdraw or give him the silent treatment, withhold sex. And those are, those are the female forms of um, ammunition, right? Like that's how we, we become mean to our spouse. If they're not doing something we like, we try to control them, manipulate them into doing something that they we want them to or trying or being a certain way to make us happy because we're upset. And I had to realize that, hey, I need to be happy and complete in God first so that my focus is how can I now be a blessing to Edric and a blessing to my children instead of like a leech trying to get my source of joy and my source of confidence and self-worth from a person, from my husband, which nobody, even the most perfect guy can ever fulfill because that's God's role. He's the only one that's meant to fill that in us. And I had to learn that. And I learned that maybe not too long ago too, maybe four or five years ago, um, you know, so I'm still gonna learn more lessons, I'm sure, but that's the most recent one. Wow, amazing. But that's, that's so true because no one else can fill that void in our hearts apart from God. And unless we have God as number one in our lives, seating, sitting at the center of our hearts, no one can ever experience fullness or, mean, or, or complete meaning or uh, complete purpose in this life unless he is there in the center and yeah. number one. Mm -hmm. okay. and I'll just add this last thing, okay? I just thought about as I'm looking at you two and how you guys are doing together, doing this together. And this is like a form of ministry also for you guys. Right? And I think that people need to realize that. Do something together that's outside of just yourselves as a married couple, where you are being a blessing to others in whatever way you can. You're serving together as a team. And I think that also gives your marriage a higher purpose, right? And there's a higher sense of accountability because, hey, how can I give to people what I myself don't have? How can I minister to people if I'm not walking right with God? So I'm so blessed just seeing you guys. And I think your blessing people is also blessing your marriage. So I think people need to do the same thing. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. You, you have been an inspiration, you and Edric, for us. I mean, you've been in this for longer than, than we are. And we're so grateful that you have walked ahead of us and you serve as an inspiration and a leader for us as well. So thanks.
you and your exactly. family, your whole family. Yes. <laughs> well, I think we all learn from each other. We also learn from you guys, right? So that's how God designed it. Yeah, yeah. praise yeah. God. Yeah. So can we, uh, can you um, lead us for a closing prayer? Sure. Lord God, I just thank you for our time with RD and Miriam. And Lord, you know, they're just they've just gone through a new life season um, with giving birth to an, yet another child. And now they have three kids to take care of and three boys at that. And Lord, there is a reason for that. And we just thank you, first of all, for the blessing that you've given them. And we just pray that you continue to give them wisdom as they navigate parenting and being husband and wife to one another. And we pray that you bless their marriage, that you continue to anoint them for the purposes that you have in store. And they have such a wonderful platform and everyone knows that they really love you. And we pray that you would allow them to really seek after you individually. The being would come first before the doing and that they would really continue to be a blessing to people as they draw from that reservoir and their relationships with you and their personal walks with you. And we just pray that you protect their marriage, but also protect their family, um, allow them to um, be protected from the evil one, from the lies that he may plant into their hearts and minds, and that you would continue to allow them to be strong spiritually, and that their kids would really grow up to love you, to know you, to serve you, to obey you. And we just pray that you can continue to use them mightily, um, their platform, um, their wisdom, their insights, their experiences. They have such a unique platform as well and unique experiences because of their histories. And we just thank you for the gift that they are to this world and the, the many layers that they have gone through so that they have much to also give people. And we just just pray blessing upon them and their family. And we thank you, Lord, for protecting them so far. Please protect us all from the pandemic that's out there. And we pray also for deliverance and just your mercy upon the whole world um, because this disease continues to rage. And really, Lord, we look to you and we humble ourselves and we ask for healing um, for this entire world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And Lord, we prayer. speak life. We speak life to um, Joy and Edric and their entire family. We yes, praise you and thank you for what you have done and are doing through their, uh, through their lives. Lord, may many people be drawn to you and to your son, Jesus Christ, because of their example and because of their words. May they continue to be sought in light wherever they go. In Jesus' name we pray. And may you continue to cover them with a hedge of protection, mm -hmm. their family, as well as uh, the rest of the uh, the Tanchis, Lord. And um, we just pray, Lord, that we, uh, in spite of the pandemic, Lord God, um, may they continue to find strength in you mm. so that they can be strong for others who look up to them and yes. continue to use them as a shining light, Lord, in the city and mm. the rest of the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, so we'll invite you too, okay? <laughs> where, can we, where, where in social media can we find you? Yeah. Um, well, we haven't officially launched a YouTube channel, although we were asked to, but we as a couple okay we have a podcast called family unbox on spotify and then um that's for family right and then it's for parenting and then um edric has a show called um fundamentals on plus network and i have a show called teach with joy on fundamentals and then every Monday, we have this show called Mondays mm. on Facebook, on my, on my Facebook page, Teach With Joy, where we also talk about marriage and relationships. And we're going to invite Ivy <laughs> and Miriam. They can't say no because we said yes to them. <laughs> and we just launched something recently on Thursdays with our older sons called Truth Thursdays, where we talk about, um, you know, topics that would be relevant to, to young people today especially as they navigate how there's so much untruth out there and how do they really anchor themselves and make wise choices today. So that's very recent, um, but that's all on my Facebook page, Teach with Joy. And then my IG is Joy T. Mendoza, um, where I just talk about, you know, marriage, parenting, homeschooling. Um, so as God leads you, if you want to check it out, go ahead. Um, but support RD and uh, Miriam <laughs> and their channel.